Um, so I'm going to talk about joint work with Jeff Whittle and Alan Williams, um, and it's going to be about indetachable pairs. We'll see what those are in a moment. Um, the setting's always going to be in three connected matroids. Um, and so it's nice to be able to start with the result of TUTS. Uh, it's a result that we've seen already this week, uh, that is TUTS wheels and wheels theorem. Um, so it tells us that if we have a three connected matroid, then there exists some element that we can either delete or contract and remain three connected, that is, unless we are a wheel or a whirl. Okay, so I'll call this an instance of a chain theorem, that is a result where we can either delete or contract an element or elements and keep some connectivity condition. Okay, and so one way we can uh, strengthen a, a chain theorem is we can try to turn it into a, a splitter theorem, what I'll call a splitter theorem, where we also want to preserve an isomorphic copy of an N minor. Um, so for three connected matroids again, um, Seymour's splitter theorem tells us that if we have our three connected matroid M, a three connected proper minor N, um, then there exists some element that we can delete or contract, stay three connected, and keep an isomorphic copy of the N minor. Um, and so I'll sometimes might sa just say that it has an N minor. I'm always going to mean that we're keeping some isomorphic copy of the N minor. This will become even more important as I go on. Um, so, so now I can define what a detachable pair is. I'll say a detachable pair is a pair of elements such that if you delete both or contract both, then you stay three connected. Um, so the main result I want to present in this talk is a, a splitter type theorem for detachable pairs. Uh, so towards that end, I'll say that if we have some three connected minor N, then an N detachable pair will be such a pair where we uh, delete both or contract both, keep three connectivity, and keep uh, an isomorphic copy of that N minor. Okay, so just a couple things to note. We're not happy deleting one element and contracting one element. We have to delete both, or we have to contract both. Um, and we're talking about uh, vanilla three connectivity here, not up to simplification or co-simplification or anything like that. Okay, so before I get to uh, characterization of when we can find indetachable pairs, um, I want to give a little bit of motivation for why we're interested in these things. Um, so our primary motivation is in uh, an attempt to come up with excluded minor characterizations for uh, when matroids are representable over a finite field or a collection of finite fields. Um, so I'm going to talk about a, a general strategy for trying to bound the size of an excluded minor for F representability, where F is your favorite finite field, uh, but choose carefully. Um, so the argument I'm going to give here is using a lot of the ideas, or essentially the ideas from the Gil and Girard's Kapoor proof for GF4. Um, okay, so to start with, we've got an excluded minor. So if you were to delete an element X or delete an element Y, we'd become F representable. So we have F representations for these uh, matroids. Um, and so at this point, I'm just gonna say, suppose that you can find some nice uh, representations that, in a sense, overlay. So more specifically, you can find a representation for M delete X delete Y, let's call this A, and we can add in a column corresponding to our uh, element Y to get M delete X, or we can add in a column corresponding to our element, uh, which way around did I say before, our element X to get M delete Y. Um, and so then what we can do is take um, this representation, starting with A, we append this vector corresponding to X, the vector corresponding to Y, and we get some a representation for a matroid that, um, that behaves a lot like M. Uh, it's sometimes called a, a companion matrix. Um, so in particular, if you were to delete X from both M and our uh, new matroid M prime here, um, we get the same thing. Or if you were to delete Y from both, you get the same thing. But, crucially, we don't have the same matroid. M, remember, was an excluded minor for F representability, whereas M prime here 
evidently we've got a representation for it that's F representable. Um, so then uh, our final step here, uh, I'm going to be a little bit vague but come back to this uh, shortly. Um, what we can do is say that there's some small, well, some submatrix that certifies that M uh, prime and M are different. Um, and by pivoting, we can get this down to some small submatrix. And then uh, we can ask about what happens if you were to remove some row or column that doesn't disturb this submatrix. Um, and this gives us a lot of information that we can try to use to bound the size of M. Um, but so far, I've, I've just said that we're we're just supposing that we got these nice overlaying representations. So the first thing I want to say is, when can we actually assure that we can do this? Um, because in general, we've got an equivalent representations to worry about. Um, so, so if we first think about when our field F is GF4, um, so for a GF4 uh, representation, uh, if we have some non-binary GF4 representable matroid, so we've got some U24 minor, once we fix a representation for this minor, uh, it uniquely extends to a representation of our whole thing, provided our whole thing was three connected. Okay, so this is a particular example of what we call a strong stabilizer. Okay, so a strong stabilizer um, is when we have that once we fix a representation for the strong stabilizer, it uniquely extends to a representation for the whole matroid when the whole matroid is three connected. Okay, so this to get these nice overlaying representations, it's sufficient that we um, are able to find a pair of elements, X and Y, such that we're three connected and have an N minor. In this case, when we delete X and Y, we've got this strong stabilizer, so it's uniquely going to extend to a representation of M delete X or M delete Y. Okay, so this should sound a bit familiar. Uh, deleting two elements, keeping three connectivity and an N minor. Up to duality, uh, we're looking for a pair like this where we can either delete them or contract them. Okay, so going back to the, this argument, we can now we're now going to suppose that we can find what is essentially an indetachable pair. Um, and in this case, we get these representations. We can build our companion matrix. Um, and so we have this picture here, and we have this small submatrix that certifies that M and M prime are not the same thing. Um, and as I said, we can ask what happens if we were to uh, delete some column, say, uh, if we kept three connectivity. Um, and we didn't disturb this little submatrix, uh, then if we still have the N minor when we do this, um, then we can use this strong stabilizer to uh, try and drive a contradiction that we get something different, uh, whereas we've got this little submatrix, sorry, we've got this little submatrix certifying that they're different. Um, so we, we get very close to a situation where we're dealing with a in fragile matroid. Okay, so an in fragile matroid, we're talking about one where um, we don't have any element that we're free to either delete or contract and keep the N minor. So with respect to the picture, what you want to think about is you're close to a situation where uh, deleting columns will kill your N minor, deleting rows will kill your N minor. Okay, so uh, there are a few bit, little bits there that were vague or uh, that you missed. Uh, to be a little bit more concrete, uh, there's this result of Clark, Oxley, Semple, and Whittle uh, that says that provided you can find an indetachable pair um, in your matroid M, then you can either bound the size of your excluded minor M uh, with respect to the size of your strong stabilizer N, or you're very close to being in fragile, M delete X and Y is the most four elements from an in fragile matroid. So the takeaway from this is that uh, we're essentially reducing the problem to uh, one where we want to bound the size of our in fragile matroids. Okay, um, but it's all subject to the existence of an indetachable pair. 
Okay, so in existing excluded minor proofs, such as the Gielan Girard's Kapoor one, um, a weaker, something weaker than an indetachable pair is used, um, but this leads to uh, technical difficulties that we hope to uh, avoid uh, by finding these indetachable pairs. And in particular, we think this will be important moving forward in projects towards finding excluded minor characterizations for, um, for example, perhaps one day GF5, um, the first step along that road being uh, representations for the Hydra 5 representable matroids. Okay, so I'm almost at a point where I can state the theorem, uh, but I need to mention one more thing, um, and that's this idea of delta Y exchange. Um, so remember from Tutts, Wills, and Wills theorem that there are situations where triangles and triads can align in just the wrong way that we cannot find an element to delete or contract and keep through connectivity. Um, so this is going to be a problem for us here as well, trying to find a couple of elements. Um, but we just sidestep this issue completely by using delta Y exchange. So this is like our get out of jail free card in a sense, and we play this card wherever we can. Um, so delta Y exchange is a generalization of the, the graph operation, uh, hence where the name comes from. Uh, from a matroidal point of view, uh, if you take a triangle, so your three element circuit, and you glue on a K4 along that triangle um, and remove the elements of your initial triangle, uh, this is our delta Y exchange. Uh, but the reason why we're perfectly happy to do delta Y exchanges um, comes back to this result of Oxley, Simple, and Vertigan. Uh, so if you recall our motivation, uh, if you've got some excluded minor, uh, this result says that uh, if you perform a delta Y exchange, you remain an excluded minor for representability over some field or even for over some partial field. Okay. So first I want to talk about this chain theorem that Alan Williams proved. Uh, so Alan was a student of Jeff's and uh, this was the result of his PhD thesis. Um, and so it's a nice characterization of when we can find a pair of elements, to a detachable pair, um, up to a single delta Y. And so it says that provided you have enough elements, um, then the only situation you can run into that's problematic is if you have a spike. Okay? Um, so the only obstruction of unbounded size is a spike, uh, a tipless spike. And so the thing to observe here with your spike is that if you take any two legs of your spike, um, so you can, so I'm talking about the partition into pairs of elements like these ones. Um, if you take any two of these, then you have four elements that's both a circuit and a co-circuit. So deleting a pair is going to give you a series pair. Contracting a pair is going to give you a parallel pair. OK. OK, so now to the theorem for N detachable pairs. For our splitter theorem, we say that if you have your three connected matroid M, a three connected minor N, such that the difference in size between M and N is at least nine elements, we'll say for now, um, then either you can find a detachable pair up to playing our uh, delta Y exchange card. Um, the only situation where uh, we can run into problems where the size difference between M and N is not bounded is if we have um, essentially a spike glued onto our uh, minor N. Okay, so we have a, a three separation where on one side you have this spike-like structure and on the other side we essentially have N. Um, and so you might ask, well, we've got a nine element difference in size between N and M here. Can you do any better than that? Um, and you can, uh, but some other structures arise. Uh, so we know precisely the structures that you get when the difference between M and N, the size difference is at least five. Um, so what happens here, the, the top three cases, um, well all of them really, are something that's very close to a, 
a spike structure, but it's a spike that hasn't really aligned uh, nicely along a three separation. Uh, it's like a, a misaligned spike in some sense uh, attaching to our minor N. Uh, and with the top three, it's really just the connectivity that causes grief, um, whereas for these other two cases here, uh, it's the combination of trying to preserve connectivity and the N minor uh, that makes these arise. Okay. Um, so I want to say just a little bit about the proof. Um, so I've alluded to the fact that uh, we delta Y when we can, um, and, and this allows us to basically deal with triangles and triads uh, easily from the get-go. So uh, provided you've, your triangle and triad isn't really essential for keeping your minor N, uh, you can perform a delta Y or Y delta as needed in order to, uh, to find some elements that allow you to keep your connectivity and your minor. And you sort of have freedom here because you're turning what would be deletable elements into contractible elements doing this delta Y. Uh, so that's the first thing we use, and we also really require the fact that we're only keeping an isomorphic copy of N. So we use this uh, a lot in our proof. Um, so once you've dealt with these, we can assume that we've only got triangles or triads that are really entrenched in all of your N minors, or any isomorphic copy of N. Um, and so then the, the high level idea of our proof is that uh, look familiar to people who have uh, proved splitter or splitter type theorems. Uh, so we, we start off using Seymour splitter theorem and say we've got up to duality, we've got an element we can delete and keep three connectivity and our minor. So we'll start off with that and say, well, uh, we've got some element, other element that we can delete, say, and keep our N minor, but suppose it doesn't keep uh, three connectivity, so we don't get a win straight away. Well, in this case, we're going to open up some three, uh, oh, sorry, going to open up some separation where our three connected minor N is mostly lying on one side, and this means that elements on the other side, we're more or less free to delete or contract them uh, and keep the N minor. So it's just reduces it to finding ones where you keep the connectivity. But um, even if you were to find, if you find a deletable element, that's great. If you find a contractible one, you're not there yet. Uh, so there's still a fair bit of work still to do. Um, and there are certain cases too where we can't actually find an X, any uh, indetachable pair, and we need to hunt a bit further uh, looking into elements in the closure or co-closure and find them this way. But uh, the, the key idea is we get down to a, a structured situation where we can say a lot about the set X that, uh, where the N minor is on the other side. Um, and then once we have this highly structured situation, we look, uh, break it down into a number of cases and with a lot of hard work and analysis try to get the result out of that. Um, so I wanted to finish just with a open question. So um, you could ask, well, what if we don't allow this single delta Y or Y delta? Um, do other structures arise? So we know from Tuts, Wheels and Wheels theorem that uh, these can potentially be a problem. Uh, more generally, you could take your N minor and if you glue on uh, a wheel, a wheel in just the right way, uh, you can get uh, more structures that cause problems there. Um, but this isn't all you can get. You could also take the cycle matroid of K3T for any T, uh, and these are uh, matroids that have no detachable pairs for any T, uh, that matroid or the dual. Um, but the question is, are these the only structures, um, or are there others? Uh, so I'll finish there. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, um, how, does, uh, how does the theorem look for just graphs? That's a good question, yeah. So, um, 
So if you interpret it for graphic matroids, I mean, so the spike case is going to go away because they're not graphic. Um, so you, so in a certain sense, it looks very similar. Three connected will just be three connected and simple. Um, but yeah, you can have a graphic interpretation of this. Any other questions? Actually, I was just wondering, so in the, the GF4 excluded mines become way simpler when you have a detachable pair leaving your non-binary. Right, yeah. Do you have a, any, so for, for the, in the case where N is U24, does this stuff simplify much? Um, I'm not sure if I understand the question. So, so can you make the... Can you make it much easier proof? If you're just really trying to keep YouTube forward, does it make life a lot easier for you? Or do you is it, is it just um, it's not something I, I've thought a lot about. Uh, you could, uh, if you think about the uh, potential obstructions, if you only got a U24 and then your um, one of these structures glued onto that, then you're, you're dealing with a, something you know a lot about. But um, yeah, I'd have to put a bit more thought into that. Okay, so before I, uh, so I think if there are any other questions, no?